welcome to a brand new episode of the Mud Buddy Service Series. I have a special project here in hand. Uh, something that most of you have not had the opportunity to work with and there is zero videos out there about this. So today we're gonna be working on the Sport V. Um, there's gonna be a series of videos. One of our customers was nice enough to let me borrow his uh, Sport V to complete this series of videos. It is gonna be really nice. Um, Dave, thank you very much for that. Thank you all for all those suggestions that you put on the on my post. Um, we're gonna start with the disassemble of the lower unit or transmission and drive, what I uh, like to call them. Um, it is, it, it looks like a lot, it really is not. Don't be scared. We do have to have the proper tools and we do have to have, um, we have to be willing to get our hands dirty. Um, it is not scary, it is not hard, but um, let's, let's start with draining the oil because seriously I have not done anything to this thing at all the only thing I did was pull the head the power head off because we're gonna send that thing to work with Micah but um, I'm gonna start with this the very first thing I wanna do is drain the oil now I'm doing this because we are going to check the drive we're gonna check bearings we're gonna check gears up here in the middle section, which is the transmission, and also the bearings. There's a few bearings up here, and uh, but mainly it's the the drive shaft and whatnot. There's a little trick that I like to use here. You guys will find the drain plug. And I like to put a piece of tape over there because just because the oil sometimes tends to run back here and it'll make a mess and you, you can't catch it. Take your drain plug off. Okay, back here, up here on the in the middle section this is the the axis cover this is where uh, where everything happens all the moving parts are you have your shift linkage you have your engine and transmission linkage you have your um, neutral star protection circuit and your switch you do have the vent some of you have a vent some of you have a bellows which is the uh, this little black part once you remove this bellow, you you actually open the ventilation for the transmission. All right. So while we wait for the oil to drain, it's quite a bit of oil. You have six and a half quarts of oil in there that keeps on dripping all over the place. So now that I have made a mess with the oil down there coming out of the transmission and, and the drive, we're gonna start by removing the shift linkage and the copper that it's on the transmit that is attached to the main shaft on the transmission. Okay, in this shift linkage we have three main components. Well I would say I want to say three because those are the ones that you take off to remove them. But uh, there's in reality five of them. You have the shift link, the shift arm, and these three little things, the cutter pin, a spacer, and the um, what do you call it? Uh, another pin. You want to be careful not to lose this little spacer right here. This is going to be very important. It's going to be the one that if you lose it, it'll make the difference between shift, shifting in time or hard shifting and, and whatnot. Okay, so when removing these three parts, just make sure you keep them in a safe place. Away from everything. And you have that off. Um, that will remove the shift arm, I means the shift cable. Now we're gonna take these two nuts off. It'll remove the, it'll take off the shift bracket.
Shift bracket. And we can either take the handle completely off. Put it aside. All right, here's a good one. This is what uh, this is one uh, call that I get many times. How to remove that coupler that attaches to the main gear in the transmission? There is I actually Loctite the coupler onto the shaft and then I apply Loctite to the bolt. It is a, it is a weird bolt. It's a hex. You're gonna have to use an Allen socket. So it's a countersunk head with Loctite. So for you guys that know about bolts, that's gonna be very, very tight. So what I do, I apply quite a bit of heat onto the bolt and the cap themselves. Um, just apply, I don't know, maybe about two minutes of heat. I don't know if you guys can't tell from where you're looking at, but I already this uh, I already cleaned this up a little bit. There was a lot of dirt, uh, leaves. There was a, a lot more grease than you can see right now. Um, what I did, because I have, you know, if you guys have compressors, just blow everything off. Make sure because we're gonna take this access cover, we're gonna take it off, so we don't want to open it up and then have all that dirt fall in where the where the uh, gears and all those bearings are that will not be good should be good for now and uh, for you guys this is another step just hit it a couple of times this is a soft mallet just brass hammer just it. That's gonna break the Loctite between the heat and the impact. It's gonna break the Loctite. Now it is very important you guys use this the right size tools. This is a quarter inch. Um, this is a quarter inch Allen socket. It's just you know it's nothing fancy. You can buy it at any auto parts store. And as you can tell, I'm just using an impact, just regular battery impact. And it comes out just like that obviously that thing is gonna be very very hot take the bolt out and whether you have a some pliers just get that thing out of there okay now the cool part comes on this you, we will have to use a puller because that you're gonna pull that coupling and there's no way you can just pull it by hand one is gonna be hot two like I said it's gonna be locked it's gonna be locked tight in there and some of them actually I have to really put them in there with a hammer so what I like to use it's a um, hydraulic puller obviously you guys don't have to use the hydraulic you can just go to the any store, Harbor Freight, whatever puller you have handy, and that will do the job. Um, I like to use a spacer just so I don't hurt the gear and also gives me a little bit more grab on my on my puller. Ooh, that's still toasty. It looks easy, but um, 
this thing is actually pretty really really strong so know that it's applying quite a bit of force now don't touch that because it like I said it's hot I burned myself quite a few times um, all right so I have seen a few people out there that they send me pictures hey how do I remove this how do I remove that and they have actually taken this whole plate off there is one two three there's eight socket head cap screws holding that plate um, top gear plate that's what it is and I have seen guys that remove the whole thing without taking the that coupler that three pin coupler off or the shift linkage and all that to me uh, obviously because I you guys don't have any of these instructional videos it's a little bit more complicated than taking all this off and taking it out the right way um, the one other thing that we have to remove is the shift linkage the cam the one that actuates the little um, the little sh uh, switch and it's this little screw right here it is a 3 16 allen you can use power tool you can use hand it doesn't matter just make sure that it's the right size these things are just gonna go they just pull up This shift arm we like that there is this this is a, um, a 3 8 knot I believe and on this side there is another it, this little screw right here is actually a Allen head screw if I remember correctly that's a 1 8 uh, There we go. As you guys can tell, I have not done anything on this unit at all. I am literally how I got it off the boat, that's how I'm showing you. And I am doing that just because all of you guys are not gonna deal with a brand new engine that is gonna be all clean and there's not gonna be grease or anything like that you're gonna have no complications on any so that's why I purposely did not touch it so you guys can see that I am there's no camera tricks or Ricky has all this and he already did something before nope alright so that's the little bolt that is in there and now if you guys can see, there is nothing obstructing the uh, this plate from coming up. There is a little trick that most of you guys don't know. We're gonna use the same um, the same socket to pull this ones out. This is a 3 16 Allen socket, the one that we use for here too. Okay, and that one it's okay. You guys can use most of. You guys can use power tools. There's some times that I don't like to because we can strip the bolts and, and all that stuff. If you notice that it's too hard to do by with with the power tool, just grab a hand tool, grab a, a, a ratchet, and um, and just do it slowly. And that is because if you if you screw this this screw up, it's good. You're gonna have a bad day. You're gonna have a real really hard time pulling that thing out believe me I've done it and it's not fun so we're gonna get them loose by hand
perfect. That's eight of them. All right, here's a little secret. I don't know if you guys can see on this camera right here, there is three holes that are threaded and they are not used. Two of them are right here, this one, this one, and there's another one back here that you probably cannot see on the camera, but it's the same. So we're gonna grab three of these little screws again I already made sure that there was no dirt grime water or anything on the on the edge of that cover so I am sure that there is nothing that's gonna go in there Hold on. for those little holes with the threads is because we're gonna use them we actually use them as lifters you're gonna feel when you touch the bottom and it's just lifting, you want to lift up this cover you want to lift up evenly and that's just assuming that everything inside we're gonna replace it or I'm sorry no, assuming that you're gonna replace it or if you're just gonna check everything just you just wanna do the things, just, just lift it up evenly you don't wanna hurt anything that doesn't need to be hurt or put some load on bearings Like I said, these these motors are really, really simple. They're probably not as simple as the HDR. Okay. We bottom that on those screws right there. Now we just grab a screwdriver. You want to be really careful with doing this because you don't want to scratch any other surfaces back he down here or in between because that's what's gonna um, in here. That's where the seal is. We use an O-ring and we also use a little bit of RTV. Now something I forgot to mention here, you probably want to get the key, the half moon key out of the way because it is going to get in the way when you try to remove that cover. How about we use a real hammer? And it comes out. All right. We're gonna lift this up. At this point, you should feel how it's coming up. If it's not coming out. We're going to tap it. You 
there's a better way to do this, but... I don't know if you can see on this camera right here, there is a gear that is going to be still attached to that cover. So if it doesn't come out with this, you're going to have to wiggle it out. This is what was holding it. I'm gonna get close to there so you guys can see what was holding it. There is these bearings that fit very, very tight on these surfaces right here. And those are the bearings that I'm gonna, that you guys are gonna have to check for. There's no grinding, they don't feel crunchy or anything like that. This is the main shaft is the one that hooks up to the coupler which then connects to the engine this is the one that I call it the, it's called the reverse gear it's the same just a very very tight fit it in this hole and that's good that's the the way that they're coming out it's perfect that's how we want them you don't want any bearings loose or spinning in there doing any kind of funny stuff and uh, this is the important part well everything is important but this one is your clutch this is the shift fork Obviously, you have the shift um, shift shaft. These are all Mercury gears. They call them the yoking cam. It's this part. Um, actually, I'm gonna try to make some, take some pictures and put them out there for you guys to recognize and know the name, the part numbers, and whatnot of every single part that goes into this transmission. This is called the dog clutch. This is also from Mercury. All this stuff that you see in here is made by Mercury Marine. Um, that's why these things are very reliable. They are not going to slip or break just because they're not being used. I mean, obviously there is a lot of wear and tear that goes into this, but I will touch base onto that. Wait. And that's all that's in here. Inside this transmission, that's it. Okay, so once you removed all those gears, the only thing that is really left in here is gonna be your uh, little tiny roller bearing. And there is also a spacer. Those two things, unless the bearing is bad, you very rarely are gonna have to replace them or even remove them. And to do so, you just grab this little tool and pull them up. And that's it. These two, this is the thrust be uh, thrust bearing and the spacer. There is a 
the way they come out of the factory, this, there's several sizes on this uh, spacer. When it's time to rebuilding, to rebuild the transmission, I would really just go for the thickest. When you talk to Travis or myself or Keith, you're replacing this bearing if it needs to be replaced for whatever reason. For whatever reason, if it's too worn, which I really highly doubt it, or if it got water in and you got, it got rusty and all that, and you need to replace it, just replace it with the thickest one. I think it's 67 thousandths the thickest, and uh, it's not gonna make. If anything, it's gonna make it shift better. So that's that's it in there. Right here in this top cover, you have the same on the on the top part of the clutch. You have the ba the thrust bearing, and you have your spacer. This this um, bearing race right here, as you can see, I don't know if you how good you can see on here. The wear on this is very even, which is perfectly. That's how you want it to be. Um, you see, you guys see the decoloration. That is exactly how you want it to be. This engine. This particular motor is in perfect condition. It's it's running just the way it's supposed to be. And it's just, I cannot find anything wrong with this as, uh, as of right now. Stay tuned, the next episode is gonna be how to remove the lower unit from this transmission.